this sweater is hot. Some days ago, IBM released a new computer chip, which is the first IBM's computer chip designed particularly for AI to train deep learning models. It is clear that artificial intelligence will be the next big revolution we will have, and it will change our world even more than the invention of computer or even the electricity yet. Currently, the complexity and the size of neural network models is increasing exponentially. The famous GPT-3 features 175 billion parameters, and the largest up-to-date is Megatron Turing model by Microsoft. It features 530 billion parameters. Just imagine how much compute power we need to train these models. That's why IBM decided to design a specialized chip for AI, so-called artificial intelligence unit. It's manufactured in 5 nanometer process node and features 23 billion transistors. For the last decade, we've been training neural networks on CPUs and GPUs. And the problem is that CPUs are too general purpose for this task. They're intended to solve all kinds of problems and typically at high precision. And this flexibility and high precision of a CPU is typically a disadvantage when it comes to a training of neural networks, which requires massively parallel computing operations. Now, there are GPUs, which are more special purpose, and they are intended to render graphics. And this requires to perform large math calculations in parallel and fast, similar to what we need for AI. GPUs appear to be there just at the right time for the pricing of AI. That's why they are still being extensively used for neural network training. However, with GPUs we faced several limitations, for instance when it comes to scalability. Now, it is expected that by scaling AI models and providing more data, we can come to a more useful or even more general AI. But for this, we need more compute resources. To be more specific, we need more efficient compute in order to push AI forward. That's why IBM designed the Artificial Intelligence Unit, their first SOC entirely dedicated for AI. Designed for AI means that IBM built an ASIC, so application-specific integrated circuit for AI workloads, which means it's in circuit optimized to perform metrics, multiply and accumulate operations. It can be programmed to run any neural network model or for any AI-related task like for natural language processing, words recognition or image recognition, anything. It can be plugged in in any server with a PCIe slot. And you know, the idea is the same as with ASIC miners. So the whole area of the chip is dedicated for a particular operation. This chip has circuits implemented on silicon, which helps to accelerate the dot function. So it's implemented in hardware level rather than in software. And when we do it at hardware level, we get a huge gain in performance and reduce the power consumption. Just to give you a feeling, in comparison to GPU, using dedicated ASIC for AI workload can give you a factor of 10 to even 100 improvement in speed, of course, if you own the entire stack and you write proper software for it. It is designed for training and running large neural networks on servers in the cloud. This new IBM chip is optimized for low precision operations, and this simply because for AI we don't need that high precision as for instance for a CPU. Actually, we are not going to calculate trajectories for space rockets with it. AI chip is designed to make predictions, and for this you don't need the highest precision. The most commonly used uh, function in deep learning is the dot function, which I already mentioned, right? A dot product is computed by multiplication of two numbers and then summing it up, so-called accumulation. IBM made the research and published a bunch of papers on the minimum precision required for the popular benchmarking networks. It is so-called approximate computing. Basically, they went from 32-bit precision down to the hybrid 8-bit precision and int4. And the simple reason for this is that additional precision doesn't give any advantage, just slowing down the whole thing and taking more memory. If you read some papers, you will see that some models can actually reach higher accuracy working with lower precision. And actually, using lower precision for AI compute is not a new thing in the industry. Companies like Google and a bunch of others like Tesla also went for lower precision for deep learning some time ago. 
The ultimate goal of introducing these new short formats is to optimize memory usage and overcome bandwidth limitations, and eventually to train larger models faster. In this way, we are coming to a trade-off between speed and accuracy. Interestingly, this chip is a not new chip designed entirely from scratch. It is an updated version of their AI accelerator, which is a part of IBM Talon processor. And Talon processor powers IBM Z16 system. This hardware, with combination with AI software, is used to scan transactions for fraud and anti-money laundering. But the potential use cases go beyond banking, to natural language processing, computer vision, speech and biology, and genomics, and more. The thing is, so far we've just barely scratched the surface of what AI can deliver. Yes, distinguishing cats from dogs and photos is fun, but we have much more critical problems to be solved, like predicting the next hurricane or whether we are heading to a recession. AI can be used to detect tumors in medical scans. It can translate languages and perform thousands of time-saving tasks. And this is where this new IBM SOC will be used. IBM's Artificial Intelligence Unit chip is an enhanced version of the AI accelerator from Talum. Talum features 8 cores and taped out in 7 nm process node, while the new chip features 32 cores and taped out in 5 nm. Here you can see the layout of the chip. Actually, I've counted 34 cores instead of 32. Maybe those two are just redundant cores. It seems this chip hasn't been measured yet, I haven't found any performance numbers. But I found a paper which shows the performance numbers of the same AI cores, but from the Talon chip. The compute density of AI core is 0.8 to 1.3 teraflops per millimeter square of silicon area. There are two values depending on the operating voltage. While NVIDIA 800 GPU, which is also in 7 nanometers, delivers 0.38 teraflops per millimeter square. And regarding the performance per watt, IBM's AI cores deliver 1.9 to 3.5 teraflops per watt versus 0.8 teraflops per watt for NVIDIA 800 GPU. Actually, this looks already substantial, but I expect these numbers to improve with the new chip taped out in 5 nanometers. In general, there is a new trend that everyone is building AI chips. Like, there is a bunch of cool startups I'm, I was talking about on my channel, like Graphcore and Cerebras. They are also building AI hardware for the cloud. And that's because we are in the pivoting moment in computing, and now AI is being applied everywhere in the hardware we design and in the software we write. And this, guys, is just the beginning. I think the next big leap in AI will happen already in this decade, when we come to a larger model and we build more compute. And eventually, we will be training AI on quantum computers. Because quantum systems, by its nature, inherently looking at multiple states simultaneously. And that's the reason why it's considered to be a much more natural hardware to run AI on, in comparison to traditional digital chips. If you enjoyed this video and you want to support me creating it, the link to the Patreon is below. I write interesting stuff there and I share behind the scenes of creation these videos. And please share this video with those who might be interested. And I will see you in the next video.